Recently, someone commented on one of my videos about glycine and said this, glycine causes cancer. And you may have seen headlines or social media posts claiming that glycine feeds cancer or that cutting glycine shrinks tumors. And if you're taking glycine for sleep, joints, or longevity, that might sound a little bit scary. So today, we're going to answer the question, does taking glycine supplements cause cancer? And we're gonna be focusing on a brand new study that was recently published in Cell Metabolism. This study is incredibly exciting when it comes to evolving treatments for certain cancers, but it may have caused some confusion or the misinterpretation of it may have caused some confusion. And here's where that confusion starts. The study looked at what happens when two amino acids, serine and glycine, are removed from the diet in people and animals with advanced solid tumors, especially colorectal cancer. Researchers found that tumors rely heavily on serine and glycine to grow. Removing these amino acids slowed tumor growth and immune cells, especially CD8 killer T cells, became more active against the tumor. Because of this, it seems that some people have jumped to this conclusion. Well, if removing glycine helps fight cancer, then taking glycine must cause cancer. But that is not what the study actually shows. Before we continue, I wanna ask you a question. Do you take glycine? And why are you taking it? For what benefits are you hoping for? What's been your experience? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you. I've been using the Hume Health Body Pod for the last few months, and man, I love this thing. I use it mainly to measure my weight, muscle mass, body fat percentage, and visceral fat. And the cool thing is it's 98% accurate compared to DEXA, and I don't have to schedule an appointment. I can measure my body fat percentage anytime I want, and I love that. It's so cool. Now, it can do a whole lot more than that. It can measure more than 40 different biometrics, but those are the four that me personally that I like to focus on. And I've noticed recently that this has become a very good tool for for holding me accountable to following through on my exercise and watching my nutrition plan a little bit more closely because you see that number and that number does not lie. I found it to be very helpful and sometimes a little frustrating. Sometimes it's a little brutal to see the number and you haven't moved the needle much. If you wanna try a Hume Health Body Pod, I have a link for you down below. You can save 15% and that discount will stack on any sale that they might be having. So whatever the sales price is, you can get an additional 15%. Also, if you have an HSA or an FSA, you can use it to pay for this. It's a qualified expense. And in some cases, your health insurance insurance will cover it. That is awesome, but you have to check with your provider on that. It's become very helpful for me, and I hope it'll help you. Now let's talk about what the study actually says. First, it's important to understand this study was not about supplements. It was also not about healthy people, and it was definitely not about cancer causation. It was about cancer metabolism. Cancer cells are metabolically very greedy and they use glycine and serine to build DNA, support rapid cell division, and maintain their altered energy systems. By temporarily restricting glycine and serine, researchers were able to stress tumor cells during active cancer treatment. And that is very different from normal dietary intake, supplementation, and healthy people using glycine for sleep, inflammation, or metabolic health or for longevity benefits. In fact, the same study showed that the serine glycine restricted diet was short term, supervised and used alongside immunotherapy, not as a general lifestyle recommendation for healthy people. Meaning they are not recommending restricting glycine in healthy people who do not already have cancer. So does glycine cause cancer? Let's be very clear, there is no evidence in this study that glycine causes cancer. What it shows is that cancer cells can use glycine once cancer already exists. And temporarily limiting glycine may help weaken tumors in a clinical 
oncology setting, that does not mean glycine is dangerous for healthy people. In fact, glycine has been studied for improved sleep quality, reduced inflammation, better metabolic health, and potential longevity benefits. None of that was contradicted by this research. This is a great example of how context really matters in nutrition science. What hurts cancer cells under medical, a medical supervised situation does not automatically harm healthy people. If you're using glycine and seeing benefits, there is nothing in this study that suggests that you should stop.